Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and would you get a brain chip put inside you? Now ladies and gentlemen, today I actually have seen something that kind of blew my mind today. I'm a huge fan of technology, I'm a huge fan of cyberpunk singularities. One day I think that we probably will be half machine, half human beings, okay? Now, before we get to that, I just want to stress, I'll be long dead, okay? I don't think that's going to happen for a little bit of time. So ladies and gentlemen, today I'm looking at Neuralink, okay? <laughs> Now, you might know this company, uh, Elon Musk owns it, like many companies he owns, Tesla, Twitter. Sometimes you get a bit of a mixed bag. Now, I'm somebody that just likes looking at things objectively, so I'm going to give a little bit of credit over here. What I'm about to show you is some pretty cool stuff initially when I saw it, okay? And then I went down a rabbit hole of brain uh, interface companies. So let's actually look at what's going on. Now, Neuralink, for some quick context and history, has had a pretty tumultuous reveal. For instance, if you go to their website right over here, they're pretty simple, all right? They'll actually tell you their mission is to create a generalized brain interface to restore autonomy to those with unmet medical needs today and unlock human potential tomorrow. So for now, it's about fixing people up who have actual medical problems that, you know, are unmet, and then tomorrow we download entire shit to our brains, okay? Now, look, I cover computer malware and all this crazy stuff. So anytime a piece of technology gets installed into my head, if I got to start firmware updating a piece of tech in my brain, that's scary, okay? This is coming from the same guy whose company updates a vehicle and has severe issues, okay? Uh, let me tell you something right now. As one of those owners, uh, updating a car from Elon Musk is kind of a mixed bag. At the toss of the coin, you could take it to a service center or actually manage to drive it. So I could only be scared at what a brain interface chip is going to do. Now looking at the chip, it actually looks mostly like a watch battery almost, a, a bigger watch battery with these like small little threads that I believe they're supposed to connect into your brain through a surgery that requires a robot because no human hands could apparently do this. And here they like show you what's in here. They got the biocompatible enclosure. They've got a battery that needs to be charged uh, from the outside. So I assume you just connect a little charger to your brain or head and, uh, and let it wirelessly charge using induction, which, which sounds weird. Uh, almost sounds a little uh, painful in a way too. I mean, that, that generates heat like crazy. And then of course you've got like the chips and electronics over there, low power chips and whatnot. And then of course the threads that connect into your brain. Now, if you're wondering, whoa, Muda, can I get a brain chip? Bro, they literally have first clinical trial is open to recruitment. So if you're part of the United States or Canada and you're 18 years of age and you're able to consent and you got quadriplegia, paraplegia, vision loss, hearing loss, the inability to speak or major limb amputation, then please feel free to sign up and maybe one day you can get brain chipped in your head. Now, again, one of the actual interesting things is if you look into the history of it, back in the end of 2022, it was Reuters that was reporting that the company Neuralink had killed 1,500 animals, more than 280 sheep, pigs, and monkeys. And then, of course, that was experiments since 2018, according to the records reviewed by Reuters, and they had sources with the uh, company's animal testing operations. Now, the total number of animal deaths does not necessarily indicate that Neuralink is violating regulations or standard practices. Many companies routinely use animals in experiments to advance human health care. And I'll say right now, animal testing happens in a lot of industries, the automobile industry, even in the skincare industry. Like we have One Up now, which is a great brand, by the way. Go to gotoneup.com. Uh, absolutely do your skincare routine in literally one pump a day. Uh, absolutely designed for somebody that has stuff to do on a daily basis, okay? But again, ladies and gentlemen, even dealing with something like this, when we actually talked to our formulator and we actually had discussions internally, animal testing, there is a lot of red tape involved with the United States federal government. So obviously Neuralink, having to get themselves tested, having to get themselves constantly into this trouble, didn't look that great. And then like months later after that, Elon Musk's Neuralink actually got FDA approval. And the FDA is like the scariest U.S. federal agency after the Internal Revenue Service, okay? The last agencies you want to fuck with is the IRS and FDA. I would be more scared of these two agencies than the FBI and the CIA and all these other three-letter agencies busting down my door. I shit you not. 
And of course, it was actually insane because they got the first inhuman clinical trials, which is what has led to an actual human being getting the brain chip into their head. Now, if you go to the actual uh, Neuralink YouTube channel, literally like 12 hours ago, they uploaded the Neuralink live update, March 2024. An actual person has this chip in their head. Now, the reason I have to mute this is because they decided to put like, I think copyright music in the background. They just had music running. This is filmed kind of like Mark Zuckerberg crapping on the Apple Vision Pro inside somebody's house. It's got kind of this homey vibe to it. So again, this is literally just shot to show people what they actually have going. So here he's got like a MacBook with like chess running on it. And of course, like steam in the background. And what's interesting is he's actually able to move the mouse around through this. Unfortunately, the actual image is uploaded in like 240p for some reason. But yes, he is actually controlling chess. Uh, the actual interface is, it's, he's interfacing from his brain chip to the actual computer. So this man is actually able to control a computer now and do, again, tasks that you and I normally could do uh, using the power of their brain. With telekinesis, I guess you could say, unlocked. He actually installed telekinetic powers into their head, okay? <laughs> Can you explain a little bit just to people who maybe don't have any context on this field or what's going on here? Yeah. How are you able to actually move the cursor? Yeah, so we started out with a few, trying out a few different things. Um, we basically went from what we call kind of differentiating, like imagined movement versus um, attempted movement. So a lot of what we started out with was attempting to move. So I would attempt to move, say, my right hand, left, right, forward, back. To me. And um, from there, I think it just became intuitive for me to start imagining the cursor moving. Um, basically, it was like uh, using the force on a cursor <laughs> and I could get it to move wherever I wanted, just stare somewhere in the screen and it would move where I wanted it to. Um, which was such a wild experience. Now, obviously for Nolan over here, I'm pretty happy that he actually has his quality of life improved, as I think most people are. Now, what's interesting is when he talks about, like, I just imagine I'm doing something and he's basically using the force. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's as close to telekinesis as we're kind of getting. He imagines where he wants the mouse to go and the mouse just goes there. So again, this is a pretty huge step for this company that I kind of expected to just sort of sit down. Elon Musk is the kind of guy that promises a lot of things, but I really don't see them materialize to the point, you know, like things like the Tesla robo taxi, right? Like the idea of like the Tesla fully, uh, you know, autonomous driving system, not requiring you to constantly jiggle the wheel because at that point, it's not an autonomous driving system. I might as well just drive the fucking car myself. So it's weird that, you know, you're looking at a guy whose companies involve Tesla, which, you know, great luxury car brand for EVs, but their autonomous driving system isn't to the level it should be or is promised. And I think there's other car manufacturers like Mercedes that have actually superseded Tesla when it comes to that boon in their wallet. Uh, you've also got things like Twitter, which has, you know, been down under the pussy and bio crap. So again, there's a lot of misses, but this seems like an actual genuine success over here, right? It seems like this is something awesome for them to show. So again, I'm glad to see that, you know, people like Nolan actually have their quality of life improved. And like the next steps apparently is to actually go beyond and start focusing on fixing a lot of people with paralysis. Maybe one day reigniting a lot of these synapses and natural like, uh, you know, um, uh, natural like currents in their brain in order to actually move again or possibly see and do things, right? Actually cure a lot of medical conditions that exist. Now, to me, this is kind of weird because I've always learned about the brain being this like, beast that we still have yet to understand. I think when you talk to anybody, right, like with in, in the terms of like neurology, uh, in terms of neuroscience, the brain is still very much in a, a, a misunderstood creature. We still don't know <clears throat> entirely how the brain properly works and it's gonna take a lot more research. So maybe this kind of stuff can accelerate it. May, I think we're a long ways away from installing intelligence and installing stuff into our head, much like a smartphone. But for now, it seems like what you can do is actually control a computer, right? Maybe one day he can type things out, you know, write emails, all without even touching a keyboard or mouse. 
Now, do I think you should get a fucking Neuralink? Should I get a Neuralink? I think unless you are actually physically debilitated or mentally or whatever, and you need this device to function again in society, that is the only reason you should go for it. I don't think you should cosmetically be getting this just for the sake of getting it, okay? The last thing I can ever trust is a big tech company constantly involved into my head. That's like that shitter thing from South Park, okay? Don't, don't, don't be doing that. Don't install the shitter to your head. <laughs> Now I went down the actual rabbit hole of BCI companies, which is brain computer interface organizations. And you got Neuralink, you've got Cognition, you've got Paradromics, you've got Synchron, Kernel, BrainGate, BlackRock, Neurotech, Neurable, and Emotive Systems. And it just keeps going on and on and on. So there's a lot more companies that are involved in the brain interfacing game. For instance, you've got companies like, again, the Cognition, which are creating these like brain computer interface programs, which I guess you put this on your head, like a standard, like a, you know, head mounted device. And it's got like these little prongs that are able to read the brain activity in your head. You've got BrainGate who have been around for a while too, where their actual like uh, brain technology, from my understanding, may be slightly less invasive. Like I think you still need to get chipped into your head, but they use like a special rod that connects up there just to actually read brainwave patterns. For instance, one actual clip I saw from seven years ago by Stanford was actually like an individual who had this thing installed to their head and was actually typing around in here. So again, they were looking around, typing things into it. And for people who are completely disabled, getting access to technology, getting access to accessible services, is probably the best thing you can actually hope to see. So using this device that obviously reads brainwave patterns, they're able to move this dot around and interact and type things out for people, right? Now, one thing that kind of makes me wonder about this too is like, if this is where we're at, where we're moving a mouse around, I don't understand if we necessarily need super invasive brain technology either. I really think this could probably be done with like a $237 eye tracker. This is the Toby eye tracker, which if you're like a gamer, this is one of those like special devices you buy if you want to like, you know, show people where you're looking at on your monitor, or there are certain games where you can have like head tracking, eye tracking. I wonder if this could be used instead of actually chipping your brain, at least for the functionalities we've kind of seen. I see a lot of people getting blown away, but the more I go down this rabbit hole, the more I realize that brain interfacing technologies and a lot of this stuff has already pretty much existed. The eye tracking stuff is in like, from what I understand, most actual like VR headsets these days. I think even PlayStation has it. I think Apple Vision, Apple Vision Pro has a great eye tracker. Obviously it costs a fair bit. I would still say less than a Neuralink or any of these brain interfacing devices. And I think even the Oculus Quest 3 has eye tracking as well too. So again, I don't understand if we necessarily need this stuff to use a mouse and keyboard on our system anyways. But I guess that's like the big breakthrough point for a lot of these brain interface companies. And then it gets even insane over here, ladies and gentlemen. Back in 2021, I, I looked up this thing called the NeuroSwarm 3, which apparently it's insane if you read about it. The researchers behind NeuroSwarm 3 say their gold-coated nanosensor, which is about the size of a single virus particle, a virus particle, you can even see that with the naked eye, can travel through the bloodstream and across the blood-brain barrier. Once inside the brain, they act like some sort of antenna, converting neural activity into optical signals that can be sent wirelessly to external devices. Now, one of the things that I could imagine is like actually having like full telepathy in this, like a full telekinesis, like actually being able to talk to somebody. Like imagine DMing somebody with a Neuralink, like you're just looking at each other and you can just communicate back and forth through your like head devices. Nobody else needs to hear. It's like the codec from Metal Gear Solid. The tiny bones in your ear, only you can hear each other. It's crazy shit. Then of course you got other devices like Synchron for instance, where again, like the, the big breakthrough for some of these companies is obviously interacting with like actual uh, devices. Like right over here, this person apparently has the actual Synchron device into their head and they're just interacting with again, the keyboard, moving a mouse around. Again, I feel like a lot of this stuff could possibly just be done with eye tracking instead of these like super expensive and invasive techniques. But then again, this is also meant to interact with numerous devices and not just one in general. 
But yeah, the actual case that every single person is showing, and it's not just Elon, it's like all these other companies, I feel could be done in a much cheaper, less invasive manner. But then again, I don't run a brain company. One brain company I did see though, was this one right here. It's called Prophetical. <laughs> and they have a tool called Halo. The Halo is a tool for humans to explore their subconscious. <laughs> This is the most advanced neurotech wearable ever created. The Halo Morpheus One system generates neural activation sequence patterns of natural lucid dreams on demand by utilizing multi-element focused ultrasound, generative 3D spatial pulse control. Dude, just list everything imaginable. I, I don't know any of this shit. I'll just believe it. Deposit to reserve your headset. So you pay them a hundred bucks now and then two grand later, and apparently this device is designed to help you start lucid dreaming. Literally, you can induce a lucid dream and explore your subconsciousness. So while you sleep, you can get things done, I guess. Do you tell me I can space travel in my dreams? Use magical powers if I buy a $2,000 headset? See, I don't know. This is one of those things where now we're getting into the world of like pseudoscience. Sure, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when I see the tech YouTuber actually cover this. But yeah, this is like the most advanced, like weird form of like brain interfacing technology out there. But yeah, I went down a rabbit hole to like look into some of these companies and I'm pretty surprised at some of the progress going on. Now look, at the end of the day, this stuff is made in order to actually change lives for the better, right? People that are paralyzed, people that have debilitating conditions. I think if we can one day cure that using a lot of this tech, then I'm 100% for it. But some of the use cases that I've seen have made me go from being blown away to wondering if we actually do need some of this brain tech. If all we've gotten so far is like keyboard mouse interactions, I feel like that may be just done through eye tracking technology anyways. But hey, look, Maybe this is like baby steps, right? I mean, we just put a chip into our head. The fact that it works and lesions aren't forming and our body isn't attacking a foreign object is probably awesome enough. But that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am out.